Mr. Topstep here with today's video and the name of it traders is the S&P 500 and the Yellen Reality Check. Good to see you guys. Now look, you know, we've got two more trading days left in the quarter and right now what we're into is we're into something called T plus three. Now they say that they, that they no longer have T plus three, but I, 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 I don't think that's a reality. I think what they do is they still have the ability to mark up and mark down stocks at the end of a quarter, at the end of a month, in the beginning of the month, in the middle of the month. And whether the process is exactly the same, it, it doesn't really matter because the mutual funds are marking up and marking down stocks as we go into the end of the quarter. The process is called T plus three. Anyway, so Chair, Chairman Yellen, Chairwoman Yellen today, finally admitted that the global weakness justifies a slower path of interest rate increases. You know, one of the funny, fuzzy things about what's going on with our economy right now is we can't really get our finger on what's actually going on. And for the last six months plus, the Federal Reserve has been pounding the drum that they are going to raise interest rates. And first, they had several interest rate hikes planned this year. Now they've gone down to, went down to two, and now they're possibly going down to zero interest rate hikes this year. So... With all this quantitative easing going around around the globe, with, with China doing what it's doing with its reserve currency, um, you know, more quantitative easing in, 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 in Europe, I've always thought that it would be hard for the Fed to move forward like this. What's going against the grain of what's going on um, globally and in, in, the, in the global economy. And uh, here, they're going a couple of things. Now, despite this, there only being two days left in the quarter or in, in March, we have a busy economic schedule over the next couple of days. So to think that this is just going to level off, I don't think it will. Um, and then and then, and then, next week we'll have the, 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 the March jobs report. So then we're going to go into that whole cycle again. But let, let's talk real quickly about what's going on here today. Futures sold off. We've had several lows. You know, it's called back and fill price action. The S&P kept bouncing off that 2020 level, 2022 level. May took out the 2020 level by a couple ticks today, and now after the Fed acquiesced is what I'll call it, acquiesced that they can't raise interest rates anymore in 2000, or very unlikely in 2016, the markets reacted in kind. They took off to the upside. Now, I'm going to go back to one thing. My next 40 handles was from 2040, and that would still mean that the S&P would have to rally to 20. 21 even, and I don't think that that's in the cards. But I've got to say one thing, that let me, let me go over these stats as we go into the end of the quarter, into the end of the month, and the beginning of the new month. The last trading day of the, the, the first quarter has the Dow down 16 of the last 21 occasions. Now, this flip-flops going into the first trading day of the new quarter, or April 1, where the, the Dow has been up sharp, statistically up, more than it's been down. And, and I kind of think that that's going to play out. I still think that there's a possibility that you see some type of walkaway trade. And I want to point something out. I try to, I try to get off of that idea that the S&P could go down during the quad witch. I pointed out during the, the week of Easter that I thought it was probably going to play out as thin to win. We did get a hit down. We, we did see the S&P sell off. And we did get a lower close, our first lower close in six weeks. And... And the, march, the markets just came flying back up today, almost wiping out all the, all the sell-off that they've had over the last two weeks and, and literally in, in minutes as the Fed, Fed Chairman Yellen was on TV. So where are we at here? The big, quite, the, the big thing here is if you're a bear, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to saying one thing. I'm not here to fight City Hall. I think that determining the trend, determining the direction of the market and trying to go with it is a much easier trade than trying to stand on the side selling it when it's going up like it is. And despite a couple of days' worth of sell-offs here, the S&P has been doing a pretty good job of back and filling at the 2020 level. And I think today's, the net, net of today is that if you look at the chart, that's exactly where it's been holding the last several days when we sold off. Now, going into April, again, I'm not sure that you're supposed to have your bear hat on right now, guys. Um, overall price action is indicating higher prices. And what what this this should also be part of your trading toolbook as you're going into April thinking about maybe getting short. April is the best month 
on record for the Dow and the S&P since 1971. Now, I'm up for selling the rally, and I'm still thinking that I could be right about the next 60 handles being down from 2040. But I'm going to tell you what, I think there's some heat going to be about to be applied on the upside here. And it is being applied as we speak. The S&P has just traded up all the way to, we're right now on our highs of the day at 2044 half. And I want to do a shout out to Ty, Shy Stock. He made a long trade here this morning in our forum. He made an ad into it. And he's got an upside objective of 2052. Now, I'm going to go back to one other little thing. The Pipples always said, he asked me in the very beginning when we met, do I follow the winners? I believe I do follow the winners. And the winners are WB in my forum, Shy Stock, and Top Notch. And, and Discovery Trading, and we've got, we've got a couple others in there. We're trying, to, we're trying to pull them up through the ranks. But David Doobie is one of the guys I think is a very, very good trader. And look, at the end of the day, I'm going to re re reiterate something. I don't think that with all the moving parts out there that everyone can hit everything all day long. It just doesn't work like that. There's too many moving parts and they're moving too quickly. That said, the downside had a little bit of a shot. We got a little bit of a shot on the downside and now the markets are working their way back up. Possible walk away on Friday, but we still got a, our Thursday, but I'll tell you what, the momentum here is pretty, pretty, pretty strong. And, you know, I don't know what's, the pit bull pointed out early in the day that the Quacha was up like 180, and then the Fed, Fed announcement stuff hit the lines, hit the headlines, and the S&P just took off, and it's never looked back. So when you see that kind of stuff, generally that just doesn't end in a day or two. There's generally more of that. So can they sell a little bit going into the end of the trade tomorrow? Yeah, I think. But as you go into the beginning of April, and knowing that it's one of the best performing months since 1971, I'd be a little concerned about being short here. Have a good one, traders, and I'll be back. See me on Periscope. Mr. Top Step on Periscope.